every great guitar player you want to be like has gone through the phase where they realized they actually needed to learn a shit ton of rhythm guitar before they really got good at lead. So with this video, I'm going to give you the fundamentals on what rhythm guitar is and how to learn it because it'll make you a better lead player as an end result. And you'll also just be good at playing rhythm guitar, which is literally half of what you can learn. So the first fundamental is just gonna echo the basics of lead guitar. If you don't know your scales, you're still going to be in a heat pile of shit. So learn your major scale. For example, here's position one, if you don't know it already. And obviously there's ways you can interpret that into different modes using one big repeating pattern that I explain in many other videos. So go check those out if you don't get it yet. Now that our echoing is out of the way, what is the first fundamental of rhythm guitar? Well, what are you playing when you play rhythm guitar? Almost all the time, it's just really playing chords or power chords. So you need to know how chords interact with each other, also known as functional harmony. And the first part of functional harmony is just understanding that you play the one, four, and five as major tones, which often sound more uplifting. Two, three, and six are minor tones. And for anyone curious about the seven, it's just diminished and sounds pretty ugly as a chord when you play it. So you kind of can just forget about it as it's not important for the basic fundamentals of what you've used 90% of the time. Now that you understand the tonation, you need to actually understand what playing specific chords is doing like I have here, one, four, five. Obviously, since they're major, it means they're uplifting, but it doesn't really tell you what they're actually doing. You're doing, you have to understand three terms that I ditched the musical meaning of and you just know there's gonna be chords that feel like home or chords that feel like a really strong pull. So the first concept you need to understand is home chords, which are just chords that feel like they're at home. They make the chord progression feel at rest. And these chords do that by containing the third degree of the scale, but you don't really need to care about that. You just need to know it's the one and the six. And in the key of A major, that would just be the <laughs> And of course, let's say you want this progression to start moving somewhere. We could play a bridge chord to take it off of home and make it so it feels like it should go somewhere, but it's really dynamic where it can go, which is where our four chord comes in and our two. And our three chord often will do the same thing of that bridge function. And of course, we could bridge to a pull, which are notes that really, really strongly want to resolve to the one but you can also revolve them to the six for a satisfying sound, but it's a different, more sad home than the one usually is. And this is the job of the trusted five chord. And also that weird seven chord does the same thing because both of these chords contain the seventh degree of the scale. Using this oversimplified version of functional harmony, you can really understand what chords are doing when you place them next to each other. So let's say you wanna create something that has a strong pull towards home, but it doesn't quite go home because it wants to go, but, be, but it doesn't quite go home because it goes to the sixth instead of the one. And this is what that would sound like. There's our home, pulling slightly away. There's a really strong pull back. Feeling a half resolution to the sixth. popular songs use these simple things just between the one, four, five, and six, and often the two. Now that you have a way to understand what chords to play when and for what reason, now you need to know how to actually play them the right way. And this is obviously going to come down to something many people hate practicing, which is timing. One way to do it is with the metronome, drummer, etc. But you also need to just be able to do it on your own, either pacing with your foot, chewing gum, whatever you have to do, you have to learn how to keep time and how to divide it. And here's how to divide it. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Usually this down is stressed and so is this one. If we just play a normal basic beat. Now, I talked to you about how to divide these, what are often called doubles, into something to make rhythms more interesting. So what we can do is we can divide, let's say this upstroke into another down, up. If we played everything the same, but this was syncopated to 16th notes, this is how it would sound. And that is how you can interpret rhythm and syncopation 
And obviously when you have rest notes and other stuff, it gets more complicated, but you can easily practice that without an explanation because you know the basic fundamentals of rhythm. But in case you don't, here's a more complicated example, which would be played like this. So now that you understand what chords you could play, how to play them in rhythm and blah, 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 what do you actually have to focus on? And this is going to be the bass player, the person everybody doesn't really like because no one actually knows why they're useful until you don't really hear them in the mix. So how do you follow what a bass player is doing if they're not following you? And so often rhythm and bass will work together by bass playing root notes or by bass playing a root note, a third, a fifth or whatever of the triad you're playing. But you have to understand the rhythm the bass is playing because, because in a simple setting, the rhythm guitar and bass are gonna be doing a very syncopated thing to each other, but sometimes the bass does break away and you have to be aware of that. Because the worst thing you can do is accidentally not be stressing the same things and then it just ends up sounding like shit. The second thing you gotta understand is you are trying to make the lead player sound better, but the lead player should really be playing to make the chords have more emotion using a lead melody. Because chords can reharmonize the melody to make it happier, sadder, more crushing, less crushing, etc. And when you set the tone for that lead player, they can create a great solo over you playing good chords. And obviously, when we talked about rhythm just now, you can dynamically switch that up to match the intensity and tonal changes of a solo on the spot. So by understanding functional harmony, so you know what to play, why to play it, and understanding rhythm and how to adjust it compared to lead, bass, vocals, drums, whatever, and making sure that you can play a rhythm appropriate to the song. And a gift I'm gonna give you in this video for no cost is just gonna be one of the best drumming patterns you can do to syncopate away from a basic drum beat and make something really danceable and groovable. And that's gonna be something called a ska pattern. And a ska pattern is when you just emphasize the up notes and you don't play those down beats. And here's what it sounds like. And obviously you can really take the reins on it. And like we pointed out earlier with doubles, break them down even further. You can then make these patterns super awesome and make them sound sort of like this. By using everything in this video, you can take the basic steps into becoming a really good rhythm guitar player to not only actually be able to play in a rhythm setting, but you can also write better music and also play better lead guitar because you're gonna understand what's going through the head of everyone else around you once you learn to lock in the rhythm.